Thank you. We're not going to talk about snowplow, but I want to talk about the concept of data creation because I think it's very interesting. But before that, I'm going to skip this part. It's, it's a beautiful picture of me. I've been working in uh, marketing and product for 10 years. I did everything besides SEO. In the last period, I went strictly on analytics. And I'm, uh, I've been working for CXL until recently. I work now for an agency that I cannot name until the 1st of November. <laughs> but I'm very excited about announcing it soon. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm an ambassador for Women Tech Makers. It's a community uh, by Google which helps women in technology. You are too? Oh, that's so fucking awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a, very gr it's a really cool community for women that are in analytics, are in uh, cloud computing code. And I'm doing uh, a lot of these talks just because I want to make sure that more women have the courage to just sit in front of you, amazing people, and talk. OK, so what is this? Who can tell me what is this? A dashboard. You know what this is too? It's another dashboard. And this is another dashboard. So I'm assuming a lot of you people drive. I don't, for a lot of reasons. But when you are looking at your car's dashboard, you know if you need to speed up. You know if your ca car is running out of gas. You basically know what to do when you're looking at your car's dashboard. You see information, you see data, and you know what to do. How many of you know what to do when you're looking at your marketing and data dashboards? You're, you, you are an exception. You are an exception. I just saw your presentation. <laughs> so the thing, the thing is with, with the dashboards that we're looking at at a microwave, at a car, at our phones, at whatever, we know what to do. Unfortunately, and I already did this before, the problem with using a real-time dashboard to inform you about your business is that, and I'm quoting Mark Edmondson, you need a real-time person to watch it and make real-time decisions while they're looking at your dashboard. Because if you don't have a person to look at that data and come up with something, it's useless. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to help you. So that means that you have questions and you need answers for those questions. And you need to know, do I hit the gas or do I hit the brake? So that's the action that you need to take. So why do we need measurement? I want a student to answer. Johan, why do we need measurement? <laughs> Absolutely. Why do we need measurement? It's not, it's not a right or wrong. I mean, it is, but I will, I will spare you. I will spare you today. Why do we need measurement? Mm-hmm. Team, why do we need measurement? Because you're senior. Because we need exactly what you guys said. We need to improve processes. We need to identify opportunities and trends. We need to launch new products or features for our business. We need to serve customers. We need to f serve customers. And we need to make thoughtful decisions using measurement. If you look online, you're going to find thousands of blogs giving you pompous, fluffy you know, definitions for measurement. But for me, it's, it breaks down to this five, uh, five points. But why do you guys think that planning is the most important step in your measurement journey? This is why I like what Snowplow does. Besides being a great tool, to be able to use Snowplow, you have to be Visma or something similar to Visma, where you know, you have to be a company that it's, when it comes to data maturity, and this is something, I, actually this presentation is a lot inspired by what Steen is uh, speaking about lately in the last year. The thing with data maturity is, and you will see in my presentation, it's not just you being able to afford tools or you being able to pay for technology, is you having a team that has the capacity and comprehension of why they should use those tools to inform their decisions. So it's not just about the tool, it's about you being ready. And this is something that Mark uh, Gerha for conduct, uh, from Conductress was talking about. Like you need to have the complexity in your team of mindset to be able to 
uh, to work with data creation or with tools like Snowplow or Snowflake and so on. But the planning part is the biggest problem because people do not fucking plan anything. I, we ha I, have, I do freelance also and I have clients that say, I want to know my email signups. I want to know what's my conversion rate from email. I want to know my conversion rate on the website. And I'm like, great, but why? Well, I want to see if I'm, I'm winning. I want to see if my campaigns are working because everything is about our campaigns, right? Okay, so what are you going to do when you're going to find out that information? Uh, I don't know. Because the problem is people plan to know a metric. You want to know that metric so badly, but nobody plans what happens if that metric is achieved or if that metric is not achieved. That's the biggest problem in our industry, in my opinion. And having a plan before you begin measuring ensures that the final product has the essential pieces to enable you to achieve your goals because data is a product. In our teams, you know, any company, data is a product. You have to have a roadmap for your data, not just for the things that you sell. Your data has to have an expiry date, a plan. It has to have sense. So, two things to keep in mind before you start planning, and I'm going to give you a framework today that you can take home. The context your business is in and your data maturity stage. And Steen, this is your moment of, bam, this is Steen. So Steen. <laughs> This is like the best representation of context that I've ever seen. I stole it from Steam's LinkedIn. You see, the thing is that if you look at this dog from those parts, you cannot tell what the hell that dog is doing. And that's how businesses are. If you're looking at a business just from a retention rate, you're going to be focused on increasing customer lifetime value. And God, I've seen those businesses and Steam knows I've seen those businesses. If you look just at acquisition, you're going to be blindsided. Or if you're doing testing or optimization, if you're just optimizing the checkout page, well, I'm going to tell you it's bad because you have to look at the whole customer journey. You cannot test in isolation. You cannot measure in isolation. You need a plan. So this here, it's your path to measurement. This is the cave. This is the valley. And that's the summit. It's 16. I, uh, uh. <laughs> so I want to show you guys what are the stages. And um, basically, I'm a cave woman, 100% a cave woman. The cave woman is a person that, like me that works with seed, pre-seed, middle stage, early stage startups that don't know what to measure, that don't know what tools they need. But it's not just their capability of affording tools. It's also their team's capability of working with those tools. This is very important. So without further ado, the problem with companies that are in the cave, that are in the valley, and in the valley is when you know what you measure and you're starting to do some A-B tests. And the summit is, you know, what Visma is doing, which I think is fucking awesome. Large scale experiments. It's like, this is where you guys are, but to get there, you have to go through the stages. And the thing is, what I've seen, and I worked with companies from all these stages, these are the three problems that they all have. There's no besides you guys. I, I'm really impressed with, with <laughs> what you guys did. These problems are no clear roadmap for measurement, chaotic reporting that leads to random acts of marketing. God, like, I hope you, let me give you an example. You're in, you have a marketing team. Let's write a blog today. Let's write two blogs. Let's post this on social media. Let's run this random campaign. Why? I don't know, it's just we, we have these reports, we think, we think it's good, we, let's see how it happens. But this happens because you don't plan the data, you don't plan, look at, look at your Manchester United face, <laughs> you don't have a plan to work with your data. So, I'm going to introduce you to this model called the Question, Information and Action Model. And I learned this from uh, this guy called Chris Mercer, Chris Mercer, <laughs> and Chris is a legend in the analytics world. And he came up with a lot of frameworks for planning, for marketing. And this guy is where I learned this from, and I want to share it with, with you guys today. This is where you can find it. So this Kia model is a framework that you can use to basically just realize what are the right metrics for you to grow based on your business maturity. And this is the Kia model. What question do I want to answer? What information I need to to answer the question, and what action will I take once I get my answer? And let's talk about each of these. The Q in Kia. So there's two types of questions that you can ask as a measurement marketer, a technical marketer, a marketer, or an analyst. 
the results question sound like this. How many sales did we make? How many products we sold? How many leads came in? And then you have the how questions. How many users saw my offer? How many users started the checkout process? Did anyone leave the checkout process without finalizing uh, the order? And then you have the information. And the information is very hard to find. Like for instance, if you run an email marketing campaign, the information that you need to know about that campaign is in the UTM parameters, right? This is where you will find you know, where that, where that is happening. This is where you get your information. But this is the thing with, with the information is you have things that are already measured and things that are not yet measured. And you don't know what you don't know. So you might be tracking already some things in Google Tag Manager with your snowplow, whatever you are using, you're probably tracking some stuff. But there's a lot of stuff that you are not measuring because you're not asking the right questions. That's, that's the biggest problem with information. And then, the oh, there you go. The and the A in Kia is for action. How will the answer be presented? What actions will I take if the answer is X? And what actions will I take if the answer is Y? And this is how it should look like. So for instance, you are a marketer, you're a measurement marketer, and you're asking yourself, which are the email campaigns that we send bringing, <laughs> bless you, the most sales? And then the information where you find it is sales by traffic source. You're looking in your Google Analytics for ideally, and you will see the sales by traffic source. And then once you get this answer as a marketer or as an analyst, you will be able to, in your analysis, you have to think, okay, what am I gonna do? If, the, if these emails are performing better, I'm gonna try to do this with more emails. But if they're not performing better, I need to look deeper to see why these emails are not converting. And this is how this dashboard planner looks like. And I'm actually gonna share this with you today when you're working to measure your data, ask yourself the right question. Don't just randomly track everything. I really dislike people that say, let's just track everything. You know, something is gonna happen. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I got in fights on Twitter because of that. The thing is that if you track everything, you're gonna create endless reports that go and die in your Google Data Studio or whatever you're using, and nobody's ever looking at them. It's very similar to those people that say, we collect customer data. We talk to customers all the time. And I say, okay, great, where are you collecting them? We have this Google Sheet. Okay, so when was the last time you opened? I don't know, it doesn't matter, it's besides the point, we're data driven. So it's, this is the biggest, this is the biggest uh, thing. So you have to work, ideally a marketing team and the analytics team should work together. I know, I know, but at least you should try. And this is how, like when you're building the roadmap for your data, if you look at data as a product, okay, <laughs> if you're looking at data as a product and you're building a roadmap for your product, you have to build one for your data because it's great to have, you know, to collect a lot of data, to call yourself data driven, but then you're gonna make, you know, the same mistakes, you're gonna do the same random acts of marketing. I've seen so many great products in the market that are great tools suck at marketing, absolutely suck. Like you don't know what they're doing. They just get you know, tons of money, they're, they're, they're being sold, but nobody understands what problem they solve because they don't do enough research, because they don't think enough into you know, what questions they want to answer. So without further ado, this is the image again, bam. So the scope in each of the stages of your business should be while you're in the cave to get visibility, understand what are the tools that you need, what metrics, are you trying to, you know, to look for? What questions do you have? And then once you get into the valley, is where you keep the pace. I, you didn't, you're not, you're not there yet. You get into the valley, you know what tools to use, you start testing, you start optimizing, you start working more. And then once you get to the summit, is where you start focusing on things on like increasing profitability. I've seen so many businesses that are in the cave, where there are not too many businesses in the valley. <laughs> just, 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 just want to keep it real. There's so many businesses in the cave that see case studies of big companies of how the data driven they are and they're trying to replicate and imitate what they're doing. And you can probably imagine that it doesn't work very well because it's not the same shit. So it's very important to do this audit on your company and your company's business needs and make sure that you track really what matters. Because at the end of the day, growing a business it's beautiful to talk about retention and lifetime value and all these romanticized shits that we are considering marketing, but the business only grows with cash flow. You have to convert, you have to make money. That's the 
reality that we're living in. And then I advise you to go on this URL to get a lot of free tools. These are the free tools that you will get. Very nifty tools that Mercer is giving out for free. Like that dashboard planner, you will get the GTM cookbook, you will get a lot of pipelines and you know, optimization stuff, these are free. Uh, but the way they are built is to help you to look at data as a product and is helping you to look at, to build a roadmap, uh, roadmap for your data. And that's it for me today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? You can ask me in a non-informal way. I've, I've got a question. Okay, please. I'm more than just a cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it, um, and I've said this when, particularly when GDPR came into play, is that it's not a problem for the analysts to solve. And I love what you said, it's about the marketers yeah. solving the problem for the analysts. Do you think it, it also needs to come from the top as well? Of course, this is a mindset for a company. If a company doesn't look at data as a product, it's just going to be done in bits and pieces. It's something that I'm trying to push. It's hard. It depends. <laughs> as my marketer response, it depends. But yeah, of course, it should be a company-wide decision. That's the reason why I like what they're promoting with data creation, because building your own you know, reports, building your own metrics, being conscious of where you're at, it's help you creating your own data. And this is how you have data with integrity, data that's ethical, data that, you know, it's respecting things that are should be private. I mean, I think, and I'm, I said this to Steen earlier, I think if we would focus more on what, in, on the what, like the behaviors, versus who is doing whatever on the website and collecting their email address, I think that's how you would grow a company. That's where testing comes, that's where optimization comes with behaviors, because the only thing that everyone is making money from is campaigns. That's where the behaviors are. You, you, you need campaigns. So it's enough to know the behaviors. It's not such an end of the world to know the IDs of the customers. You're going to make shitty decisions with those IDs of customers, period, if you don't plan out what you're doing. <laughs>